Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, like Bernie said, and then like Margaret Ann said, I've been been working with um, uh, well, working with uh, Margaret Ann. That's right for a few years now. Um, so if you're on the Twitter feed at all and you see any of the inspirational quotes come out, that is from Nimble Quotes, which is a Canadian service. I'll talk more about that at the end of the presentation. Um, but my presentation today is is going to talk about um, small business and social media. And that in itself could be like, you know, a multi-day uh, presentation. So what I'm going to focus on is um, uh, basically the frustration that some uh, small business owners feel about like, apparently this social media thing is great for so many other business owners. Why isn't it working for me? Um, so I'm going to go through some stats with you. I'm going to go through and deep dive into two different case studies. And then uh, I'm going to walk you through how you could create this same success for yourself. Uh, and then uh, we're going to do this all, wrap this up all in about 20 to 25 minutes. So it'll be an overview, but my hope by the end of this presentation is that you can see social media in, in a different way. In that way would be in a way that it could help your, your company either grow in awareness uh, or attract clients or both. So that's, uh, that's the goal for my presentation today. Um, I understand we're taking questions, but taking questions um, at the end, or if you want to type in chat, I don't know, Bernie, how you like to, to run things, but uh, happy to do either, whatever up, works. Up, then and, up to you, whatever floats your boat. I'm good. Okay, Thank folks, you. I got my chat window open. So just uh, have your questions in the chat as we go. And um, I, I'll occasionally look over and make sure that, uh, that I can get them answered. Um, and if I miss any while I'm doing the presentation, I'll for sure uh, go through them at the end. So with that, I've got a slide presentation. Um, this, I've got another screen over here and I'll share my slides in a second. And you're welcome to the presentation after, um, after this call, if you like, I can email them out to you, no problem. So let me just share my screen here and we'll get going. So with this, let's just get this set up here. All right. Is everybody seeing uh, the first slide, making social media finally work for your business? Yeah. Okay, super. Between the two slides sometimes, or the two screens, you know, sometimes it's a bit of a gamble. So with that, um, so today we'll go through a very briefly who's out there. I'm going to focus on four of the social media channels. I heard in the introductions that some of you work with uh, businesses outside of Canada and in different countries, um, sometimes there are social media channels uh, that are more popular in other countries than they are in Canada. But for the, the sake of the presentation, we're going to focus on four and the, the type of information I'm sharing with you is essentially channel agnostic. So if you get the, you know, the theory right about that, or you get the thinking right about that, it's going to work basically for, for every social channel. Um, when, when people um, ask me about like, oh, okay, so if we're going to show up on LinkedIn, how's that different than Twitter and this and that? Um, you're taking your business with you to all the different channels. You're just acting a little bit different depending on the channel that you're focused on. And you guys already know how to do this kind of thing. It's the same way pre-COVID that we would show up to a dinner party and behave a different way than we would show up to a picnic and behave a different way than we'd show up to a, you know, a, a work dinner. So we're still taking ourselves there. We might be dressed differently. We might have, you know, different conversations, but we're still us. So that's the way that I want to think. I want you to think about your company. You're still your company when you show up on these different social channels. It just may interact a little bit differently depending on uh, which one you're on. So for, for who's out there, so I've got some basic stats around here. Uh, what I, the reason I'm doing this, what I hear uh, is sometimes people saying, oh, you know what, Facebook is dead. There's no way we should advertise there or isn't LinkedIn, uh, you know, just for business and aren't they just kind of a boring social channel? So I just wanted to start off with a little bit of data. Um, so for LinkedIn, 
generally it's a business focus. That's what's different about LinkedIn compared to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, which are the other three that I'll go over today. We've got 675 million users worldwide, 250, that should say 250 million per month, and 3 million share info. What's important about that is you might feel like, oh my goodness, there's so many people on this channel. How could my voice ever get heard? Well, if you look at that from a, you know, a statistical point of view, it's only a small amount of people that are sharing with, to a wide audience. So there is room for your message, your company's message. If we go over to Facebook, what I have here is Facebook, you know, kind of a life focus. Um, I do know of many uh, small business owners, small business companies, and even like B2B that are having success on Facebook. So uh, of course it is possible, uh, but generally more of a life focus. And what I mean by life focus is, you know, what's going on with my social life, my family life, my house, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got a huge amount of users, 2.5 billion per month. Again, you see the drop. So as, as there may be a, many, many who have an account, uh, you know, fewer are active and fewer are the ones that are sharing. Um, so in Facebook, you got 74% of users visiting the site daily. So pretty impressive. If we go over to Twitter, Twitter always gets, uh, in my experience, the, the short end of the stick. People just wonder, is it still around? Is it still applicable? Uh, it is. So 330 million users and 145 million daily users. Uh, what's different about Twitter moves faster than many of the other social networks, meaning that you can do many, many posts per day and not wear out your, your audience. But it's also, you know, what's the news? So what's the news generally in the world or what's the news in my industry? So that tends to be the focus around Twitter. And lastly, if we go to Instagram, I have, let me show you there because Instagram is, is essentially very, very visual. Uh, again, they've got some large numbers there and just over half female. Uh, I put that in there because if you do the math, just under half is male. Sometimes I hear that Instagram seems to be, oh, it's more female focused. Well, you know, about half the users are men. So just to give you some, um, some data on that. So that's the data part of the presentation. Here's kind of the elephant in the room if we, if we talk about social media. Um, I run uh, a, a marketing company and our team becomes the marketing department for small businesses that don't have a marketing department or a marketing team. And for no other channel do we have as much pushback than we do with social media. If we suggest someone, again, pre-COVID, uh, do trade shows, if we suggest a billboard ad, if we suggest, you know, a local uh, community newspaper, um, you know, ad campaign, uh, we are never met with as much resistance as we are when we suggest, okay, let's get you on social media. <laughs> so much passionate, uh, you know, refusal of this. Um, and here are some of the most, uh, the, the most heard complaints, right? To global, oh my goodness, it's a, it's a worldwide uh, network, how is it going to help my local business, which people are not driving across the city for my local catchment area of service is quite local community focused. Why would social media work for me? Uh, my customers are not there. It's too childish, too fast. It's not for business. Maybe you're not sure what to post, how to use it, or not sure how to get to your local customers. Um, so with that, I want to share a couple of case studies with you uh, where that is exactly um, exactly what two of these local businesses did. And uh, we'll walk through that and um, share that with you. Um, before I just leave this slide, what I'd encourage you to do is as, uh, as it, if you have a passionately negative response to social media, um, I would just encourage you to, to step back a little bit and just uh, think about, you know, do I have that passionate uh, disregard for billboards or for any other type of promotion for my company? Because if we can separate our feelings about it uh, and realize what the potential or the opportunity is to help your business become more known, to help your business grow, 
Um, that could be a, a, a different way to think about it. Perhaps personally, you can't stand Facebook, but perhaps it's going to be great for your business. Uh, I just encourage you to, to, if you could, take a bit of an open mind um, with that as we go through some of these case studies. So the first uh, case study here, uh, we have a, a dry cleaner. So this is a, a, a client of ours, a local dry cleaner in the Beacon Hill area of Boston. So that is like a neighborhood area. So nobody in Boston is driving across town to get their clothes dry clean. So they have a catchment area of a local neighborhood. Um, so how did they use a worldwide global platform to actually help their business locally? So their favorite social media channel uh, was Twitter. Um, Twitter works, uh, and said it works quickly, it also works a lot on, uh, on hashtags. So these hashtags uh, that we had this dry cleaner use was hashtag dry cleaner, hashtag Beacon Hill for the, the area of town, and hashtag dry cleaning tips. Now this is how you take a wide global reach of a social media network and make it very, very narrow to the conversations you wanna be having. The conversations are for this small business was around dry cleaning. So anybody searching for dry cleaning, dry cleaning tips, uh, you know, they were searching for that kind of information. As well, they had the hashtag of their local um, area of the city, their neighborhood. So anyone searching for information about what was going on in their neighborhood, uh, they would come across their, uh, their tweet. Of course, the tweets could be seen by anyone around the world, uh, but this is how this company uh, really focused uh, their message and what they were trying to convey to a local neighborhood and a local type of service. So for them, so the kind of things that we had them share out on social media and social media is, it's kind of funny because you don't want it to be always about you. You want to be helpful, engaging. If we go back to the dinner party example about how you behave at the picnic compared to how you behave at the business dinner, it's the same thing about who you're sat next to, right? You're going to have a conversation, ask a little bit about them. They ask about you. You get into a conversation about, uh, you know, something third party, something industry related. We all hate being sat next to the, the guy or the girl that's all about them and you can't get a word in edgewise, right? So we already know how to behave this way. If you take that same kind of behavior thinking onto social media, that's going to work really well for you. So the type of content uh, that we, uh, we uh, came up with to have this dry cleaner share uh, was in a few different categories. So tips, tips on what do you do to get something dry cleaned? Does it need to be dry cleaned? Can it be taken, you know, can you do it yourself uh, at home? Uh, so some tips on how to remove or what to do with these kind of, uh, like we have an example here, wine stains, you know, how do you reduce the time uh, between your dry cleaning. We had another piece of content around specials. So you are able to self-promote on social media. Absolutely. It just can't be that 100% thing that you do all the time. So specials like, did they have a special for winter quote storage? Did they have wedding dress cleaning specials? That kind of thing. Did they have 20% off on Tuesdays? Whatever kind of specials they had, we had some content developed around that. This, uh, this third one was, uh, this is supposed to be a little bit funny because when you think about a dry cleaner, you're like, well, how could that be entertaining? So we had them uh, share with us uh, some of their weirdest cleans. So some of the strangest stuff that they had to clean without, you know, naming anybody or, or you know, profiling the, you know, the innocent. But some of the funny stories around like the weirdest things they've been asked to clean or had to clean or whatever. Um, then the second to last thing we had them share was something local. So something that would be going on locally within the neighborhood, whether it was a craft fair, whether it was, you know, the sports team was playing this, uh, this, this weekend, and, uh, you know, the Boston Red Sox, even though that's not local to the neighborhood, it's important to, uh, to that area. And then lastly, they had the inspirational quotes coming out. So something totally third party that was feel good, but wasn't pushing anything around the dry cleaner. So with that, so how did they get this done? Like, how did they take all that content and put it out? So this is what we had them do every day of the week. 
So Monday, uh, we had, now this, keep in mind, this is Twitter. So Twitter goes a lot faster than many of the other social networks. So posting more than once a day on Twitter, totally doable, totally reasonable. So we had a couple times a day, so we had the quotes going seven days a week. Um, but Monday was the tip, right? So remember uh, how to get the wine stain out, how do you make your clothes last longer through um, between, um, what do you call it, between dry cleaning. So Monday was the tip day. Tuesday was a special. So we're gonna promote what is on special uh, at, at the dry cleaner or why you should bring your stuff in, you know, this week. Wednesdays was another, another tip. Thursday was the weird thing, remember the, the weird stains. Um, now, let me just back up on the weird thing here. So that was meant to be funny, but it was also meant to take some of the shame away or some of the, the mystery away for, uh, from people thinking, oh, you know, the dry cleaner could never get that out or this is too weird to send up the dry cleaner. So it was meant to, you know, pull down the barriers on that as well. Um, Friday. Uh, local information. So what was going on in the neighborhood? Again, if there was a big sports game on um, Saturday, again, the special. And then uh, Sunday, they kind of took a day off and it was quotes only. So you can see in here in the seven days, they've got two days totally devoted to self-promotion, which is absolutely okay. Uh, but you can see as well that this was enough information that they had that was able to be uh, recycled and it is going to be able to be helpful ongoing. So the Weinstein tip that I learned today is going to be applicable six months from now for someone else who's just like, oh, how to get wine stains out of this, you know, out of my dress. Um, so that's what, that's what this company did. Um, so again, a dry cleaner, local catchment area, uh, if you will, typically a boring topic. And um, this is how they, uh, they had their social media run. The next case study I've got to share with you is um, a dog groomer and dog walker. So they had the, the both services in their business. Again, local business, nobody's driving three hours to go to the dog walker. You know what I mean? Like local capture. How do you use social media, which goes out globally in order to make sure that you, um, uh, you can service your local clients or attract your local clients. For this company, um, they favored Facebook generally, but they also favored LinkedIn once a week. So if you remember back to the, the slides there, Facebook um, is kind of more lifelike, let's just all, all things about our life. Uh, LinkedIn, very business focused. So you might wonder why are you advertising for you know, a dog walker on, uh, on LinkedIn? Well, pre-COVID, um, a lot of people had to, you know, leave their dogs and go commute into work. Um, so what we had them do is um, post once a week on LinkedIn, a very business focused uh, post about, you know, you don't want to leave Rover at home. We can take care of your dog walking while you're at work, um, that kind of message. So even though it was about dogs, it was really geared towards that busy professional that you know, has a dog and wants to make sure their, their dog is taken care of while they're away at the office. And then on Facebook, the tone was more all things dog-like, more, more emotional, if you, were, if you will, excuse me. So with that, um, the, the buckets of content we came up with, the, the, the things that we came up with um, to share on social media. So the first one, all kinds of dog care while you're at work. It was going on LinkedIn that was posted, uh, excuse me, posted once, uh, once a week. Very serious tone, very matter of fact, very kind of efficiency focused, very kind of, you know, trust us with your, you know, your four-legged friend while you're at work. Um, the rest of these were posted to Facebook. So dog grooming frequently asked questions, right? What are the most, um, most asked questions that they hear? We would post one of those with the answer um, as a post. Uh, dog story of the week. So this was with permission. If there was any story about, you know, maybe a dog came for the dog walking commitment and was shy and then, you know, became the leader of the pack or whatever, just some kind of story of the week, uh, successful about a dog having a good time in this company's care. Um, next was the dog walking routes. 
of the neighborhood. So one of the questions that they got asked was, where do you take my dog? Are you going to be walking her on a busy street? Does she get park time? Like what, what happens? So they would post the different routes that the dog walkers would walk. So folks could understand, oh, like what does my good dog get to see or smell when she's on her, on her, uh, on her walk with you guys. Next was the dog walking FAQ. Again, all these questions that a new client uh, to the dog walking service would get, we would post one question with answers, um, and that would be one post. And then we, uh, the next one would be either the dog groomer or the walker would be featured per week. So uh, once a month, you know, one of the employees was, was featured. And um, what was interesting about that is it was not only, you know, this is Jane, she's been walking dogs for, you know, two months. She has, you know, uh, a German Shepherd at home, that kind of thing. But it, it was the kind of thing that we shared more and more about those employees as, as the year went on. So uh, Jane, you know, member of a community volleyball team, they're the local champions, like that has nothing to do with, you know, her dog walking abilities. But it was meant to show here's, you know, the human side of who's going to be taking your dog, or, or taking care of your dog while you can't. So uh, that was the reason for doing that. And then the last one was a little bit of a dog history um, trivia. So we dig up some trivia about dogs, uh, you know, little known historical facts. Where did this breed come from, that breed, that kind of thing. So we put that out. And then this is how it looked every week. So the Monday we focused on LinkedIn, Tuesday through Sunday, this is how we had um, everything work out. So uh, what I'm trying to do with this kind of minutia is really show you all the types of information that you have in your business. How does it get broken down daily? And then how does it go out on social media? Um, frequently what we do here uh, from business owners is like, well, I, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to share. You've got a lot of information and a lot of expertise that you just take for granted because you've been working in your business so long and you just, you know, kind of know it by osmosis. Uh, but a potential customer would love to hear, uh, what is that about? How does that work? Can I get my question answered? Um, so for, let's do a case study on your business. So how do you take everything that I've shared around uh, you know, the dog groomer, pet walker, dog groomer, dog walker, and the, uh, the dry cleaner and put it towards your, your business. So if you're getting started, I would pick one channel. And as much as I said, you know, uh, don't be so emotionally, you know, uh, resistant to certain, a certain social media. But for this one, pick your favorite, pick the one you like, you got to pick one, start there because what you start on can be helpful for the other channels that you may or may not uh, branch into. So first of all, pick a channel. Probably it would be best if you picked your favorite one because then you'll be more inclined to, uh, to do some work on it than if it was one that you're not so, not so keen on. And then I want you to plan your content. So it's, this is very, this will be very easy for you. So what do you get asked about the most? So when you bring on a new client or customer, what are the top three, five, 10 questions that they're always asking you that you feel like, you know, a robot just answering because you get asked it all the time. Those make for excellent pieces of content because if many people are asking the same question, that means many people have that question. You can probably bet that your potential customers are going to have that question too. So put it out there with the question, with the answer. What do, you what, what do you wish people knew? So this is an educational thing. So what do you wish people knew about the service that you're offering, the products that you're offering? What are some of the things that you, you wish they just already knew? Because if they knew X, Y, or Z, then they would buy from you. Then they would use your service. Then they would come around to your way of thinking. You want to educate them. So brainstorm, you know, the top five, 10 things you wish people would know about your product or service, and then produce that into a post. What do you wish people did? So any kind of tips for, uh, we had, um, so for example, uh, we had Bobby the coffee guy. 
What do you wish that they did uh, with their making coffee every day? What do you wish that they would know? So what do you wish that they would know about, you know, buying coffee from a, you know, a, a small business like yours? So those kind of things uh, you can put together in your content and then that becomes a post as well. And then the last thing, I mean, people, people connect with us, uh, you know, on emotion. We've heard this before in sales, right? They, they connect with you on emotion. They justify with logic. So is there any kind of funny things, quirky, interesting things about the field of work that you're in? Uh, any kind of trivia that you, that you would like to share? Make that into content as well. So right there, without having to brag about you being number one, brag about how long you've been in business, brag about how low your pricing is, because we don't want to go there. We want to get you, you know, the, the, the fair pricing for your services and products. Um, these are some ways that you can put out some content that both help your potential customer understand a little bit more about what it's like to buy from you, do work with your business, um, if they're not uh, very familiar about your product or service. So Yvonne, uh, I know you mentioned essential oils. It's one thing I'm not super familiar, aside from knowing that they exist, don't really know much about them. What are some things that you could put out to educate people about your product or service uh, and have that kind of stuff out on, uh, on your social media? So this is a way that you can get helpful and reliable and useful information out there without resorting to, here's a sale, here's our lowest price, we're the best. So, and this is all helpful uh, as far as your potential customer is concerned. Um, so with that, I would encourage you to get started. Um, Margaret Ann and I were talking about this uh, before everybody came in. The, the thing about social media that uh, I think can be disillusioning for a lot of people is it is free. Any one of us could go and open up any social media account after this webinar right now for free, no problem. And social media is fast, right? There's all these millions and billions of people posting all this content all the time. It's moving so fast. And so sometimes we can think, okay, if it's free and it's fast, then I can get fast uh, results. My customers will come in to me, you know, like before I shut down today, uh, you know, for the day, I'm gonna have, you know, 100 new customers. So it, that's, that's something that unfortunately doesn't happen. And that is what leads to a lot of the disillusionment. So you got to remember, even though you're using this channel, on the other side of the channel is a human that needs to know about your company or your service, start to like what you do, start to trust what it is that you're selling, and then start to choose you. So it's just like networking. So pre-COVID, when we were able to go to in-person events, right? Uh, the, the, the first person that you meet and you shake hands with, you're not best friends right away, right? It takes uh, some time to build that trust and build that relationship. It's the same on social media. And uh, my, my encouragement would be to just keep going for sure. Um, all of these channels have analytics in the background. So you can see how many people clicked on your post, how many people uh, visited your page. You can see that type of information um, and so that can be really helpful because sometimes you'll put up a, a post and maybe you get one like, maybe you get two likes and you just think, oh, what is, what, why bother? But in the analytics, you can see that 152 people actually click through on that article or click through to your website. Not everybody makes a whole song and dance about what they like or don't like on social media. The vast majority are you know, using it for their, in their own research and, and don't need to publicly say, you know, hey, I just clicked on this link, but you can see that in the analytics. So be sure to, to, uh, to, to use the data in the background to really understand what's happening there for your business. 